Renee Tucci, AIFD, and I'm here today to talk about how to create a boxwood tree. It's a really beautiful, traditional adornment for the holiday season, perfect for a tabletop or a little side table. So let's see how we construct one of these. To begin with, for the structure, I have an entire brick of floral foam set within a six inch uh, dish. Um, in the floral world, this is called a loamy dish. Um, this happens to be black in color, but you can also get them in white and green um, and clear, lots of different color options. Uh, the color doesn't really matter because for the most part, by the time we're finished, you're not going to see the dish. So I've taken this brick of foam and while it was dry, I used um, hot glue and I glued the base of it into the dish and then just as an extra precaution I did one wrap around the brick with uh, waterproof tape just in case that glue wants to release I will still be able still be held into my dish with this waterproof tape that I have in here. Now this the way the foam is now is how it is made but let's make it a little more tree like. So I'm, I'm actually going to take my floral knife and I'm going to shave down the top corners so that we have more of a tree shape. And you may notice that the foam is a darker green color and that's because I have, um, I have already wet this foam so I do recommend that you start with wet foam. And you want to do this as evenly as you can. The best part is, is that you can always take more off that you can't put on, can't put it back on. So sometimes I do what I'm doing right now, take a little bit and then a little bit more until I feel like it's the shape that I want it to be. Now I've done the corners. I'm actually going to shave the, the two uh, narrowest sides a bit as well, just to cinch it in a bit at the top. And I've tapered that um, that cut down, so I don't. I haven't actually gone all the way down with my cut. I'm just about halfway down with that uh, trim there. And this looks pretty good. Now we've got more of a tree shape to begin with. So let's get started with our boxwood. So this is fresh uh, boxwood. It comes in branches that look like this. And um, basically, I just use my hands to break it. Um, in other types of floral design, uh, I always say you have to use clippers, you have to give it a fresh cut. Boxwood is one of those things that holds up very, very well and um, snaps really easily so you get a good break on that greenery. Now to start off, I always uh, establish my height and my width and then I work from there. Now let me look at this branch and see if I have a good piece that might work as the top of my tree and I do. Um, this is a nice, it's pretty thin piece but it'll give me a, a nice straight top. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and snap this here and just set this right in the middle. Now you want your greenery to go about an inch into the foam at least. If it can go a little further that's great. And then once you've established your height, let's establish the width and we do that on the bottom. I actually start on the bottom. Now I've got sort of a stub, stubby full piece here and there is a right side and a wrong side to the boxwood. You, you can tell the darker, richer green, that's the side you want to see. So make sure when you're putting your boxwood in that the side that's showing is the richer side. Now I'm gonna put this in all the way at the very bottom, almost on an upward angle, so that the greenery itself is actually hanging down and basically covering that dish. Like I said in the beginning, we're not really going to see the dish when we're finished if we do it right. So it's just at a bit of an angle to cover that dish. And I'll do another one. Now, as you can see, the brick uh, is narrow on one side and fuller on the other. So there's more space to fill um, on two of the sides than there is on two of the others. So the uh, the shorter gapped area will have will take a smaller length piece so that we're even all the way around. We want a round tree. Oh Christmas tree, we want you to be round. <laughs> okay, so I go all the way around 
around the base of my tree here just by finding pieces of my boxwood and adding that in. Now if the piece that I have snapped comes with a uh, stripped bottom, that's great. But if it doesn't, for example, if it looks like this where the greenery is all the way down to the bottom, then I, I just go ahead and I strip those other pieces away so that we have a nice clean stem to add into our foam. Now you do want the ends of your boxwood to be pretty even all the way around. Um, so as you're selecting the pieces to put in, try to keep that in mind. Obviously we want this to be uniform and to look like it all belongs together. Now it's possible that some of your boxwood has a little um, tree debris in it, little leftover leaves and things like that, just go ahead and shake that free. Okay, so now I've established my width and my height and I'm just going to fill in from here. And to do that, I'm going to use um, different pieces that I'm cutting off uh, at different uh, lengths and um, judging that based on where I'm putting the greenery. Each placement is going to be a little bit different. And so towards the top, you're going to need some shorter pieces or like this piece that I put in, um, I actually put it in on an upwards angle uh, instead of a horizontal angle. So at some point you can switch to that look so that you start to get that taper. So again, you always want to make sure that your stem is completely stripped before you put it in. And just work around the floral foam, getting a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter as we get to the top.
Now once you have all of your tree shape filled in with your boxwood, you'll want to go around and see if there's any divot areas that need to be filled in. Uh, you know, at first you make your the, the basic shape and then you can refine it a little bit. If there are any pieces that are sticking out too far, you can take a pair of scissors or even just your fingers and clip those a little shorter and just really refine your shape a little bit. Now, once you've got your shape refined, it's time to decorate. Now we've got a, uh, several different types of decorations that we're gonna be using here. And uh, the first of those is ribbon. This is a really classic um, boxwood tree decoration. I've got a red um, crushed velvet ribbon here. It's a quarter of an inch wide. You could go a little bit wider, but I don't, I don't like to go too wide um, with my boxwood tree ribbons because they're supposed to be, you know, delicate. And uh, I like to make those into what I call um, pretzel bows or just a real simple um, hand-done uh, shoestring not looking bow. So how I do that is I take my ribbon and I fold it so that it's uh, in a one of the survivor ribbon shapes and I right where it's crossed there I then take the top of that loop and bring it down to that cross area. So now I've got all three pieces of fabric meeting right in the middle and then I take my wire, in this case it's a 24 gauge wire, which is really thin and easy to work with, um, so it's good for delicate materials like ribbon. And I fold that around and twist. And this is the important part, when you twist, you wanna make sure that you're really grabbing that fabric with the wire and you're not leaving it loose, otherwise the ribbon will just pull right out. So you wanna twist it two or three times and then you can just fluff your bow out and so then you've got two loops and two tails which is a really sweet little bow and then I take my bows and I just start adding them all around my tree Okay, so once you're finished with the bows, and you can add these in until your heart is content. I think I have about 10 in here right now. I could probably do another five or six, um, but just keep adding them in, up, down, in the middle, all over the tree. At that point, then you might wanna to switch to another ornament, if you will. Um, and so I am now gonna to switch to these millimeter balls, and these are actually glass. You can hear them clanking together. They do also come in plastic. You could, of course, use um, miniature uh, ornaments that have the little individual hooks on them. These are traditional florist ornaments. We, uh, that we, they are called millimeter balls, and they come in different sizes, and they're gauged by their millimeter. Um, and they come in clusters of six. For this project, I'm actually gonna separate that cluster and make it two clusters of three. So you can actually see that the cluster of six, one of them is wound around the rest. So if you sort out which one that is and then unwind it, they will separate for you easily. And then I just take three of them and I twist them back together right under where their little balls are. And then because the wires that they're on are pretty um, narrow, I like to give it a little more structure to press into the foam with. So I'm gonna take a four inch wood wired pick. I'm gonna bend up the bottom of my millimeter ball wires and just lay that parallel to the wood pick. And then I take the wire on the wood pick and wrap it around. So that now I've just given my millimeter balls a little bit more of a uh, sturdier stem, if you will. And then we'll just add these around.
Okay, so I think I have eight clusters of three in here right now with the millimeter balls. Of course, you could add more if you'd like. But next I'm going to move on to really traditional, classic um, boxwood tree accent, and that would be pine cones. So these are actually pine cones that come um, pre-attached to a wood pick, and these have actually already been enhanced, and they are gold. So they're going to be really beautiful glistening against our boxwood here. And again, we're just going to add these in all around, as many or as few as you'd like. The great thing about the wood picks is that um, anytime you use them in floral foam, they expand and they uh, lock in place because they are an absorb. The wood picks are an absorbent material. Now I'm working on a lazy Susan or a turntable or a. Productive poly, as a friend of mine likes to call it. I do recommend that for this type of project because there is so much rotating that needs to happen. It really does make your life a lot easier. Okay. I think I have about 10 small pine cones in here right now. And then we're going to move on to our last addition for this uh, particular tree. I have some permanent botanicals, some faux uh, eucalyptus leaves here that have also been enhanced and they are glittery gold as well. So it's the perfect complement to the, to the pine cone that we're using. So I've got these um, branches and I'm going to cut these into smaller pieces and add them in with the wood picks. Now when you're cutting a permanent botanical or faux material, you'll definitely want to use wire cutters because it is such a strong and heavy duty stem. And for something like this, we can actually just cut it right in half. We can dissect the stem in half and that will give us more bang for our buck and we can get two placements out of it. Once you have all your decorations on, you are good to go. Make sure to give it a good spin and that you've covered all of your holes in your little divots. Um, now this is going to last a very long time, especially if you keep that floral foam moist, which I do recommend. You know, every two or three days, take it to the sink, pour some water straight from the top, let it run through the floral foam and right out the bottom, let it drain, and then you can put it back out on display. Do that every few days and it will hold up for weeks at a time. This boxwood will actually dry very beautifully. It will dry looking a lot like it does right now. So if you forget to water it for a few days, you're still going to get a good bit, of, a good bit of life out of it. So I hope you've learned a tip or technique on how to create a boxwood tree. And keep in mind that the uh, ideas for how you can decorate your tree are absolutely endless. Anything you can think of will look great on a tree. In fact, fresh flowers is really beautiful as well. So maybe you have this on display for the month and then uh, perhaps the day before you have an event or a holiday dinner, you poke a few um, fresh roses in there in that floral foam. That would be a really beautiful finish. So thanks a lot and I hope you have a great day.